because we were planning some extrusion, but finally we cut it the 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 aligner distal to five, so extrusion didn't happen because these anterior extrusion attachments should be linked uh, or staged together with posterior intrusion. So I was planning anterior extrusion, but it didn't happen because I was trimming the the aligner. Okay, so uh, thank you for that. Also, uh, in regards to uh, central incisors, um, Dr. Helena is asking, are you not worried about or afraid um, about devitalization of the central incisors? Because you mentioned that uh, the patient wears the aligners during space closure. Mm, I've only had one like uh, ankylosis procedure with, with aligners and one with fixed appliances. It was, in both cases, a canine, which stopped moving during the treatment and got ankylosed and uh, got a necrosis in, in both cases. But I've never had a, a problem with a, with an incisor, a devitalization or any other thing. Um, usually, I'm happy and confident of everything, so I don't think I'm going to catch coronavirus, uh, and I don't think I'm going to have any devitalization. Maybe I will have, but I, I, I'm not afraid of that, and it hasn't happened to me yet. Okay, thank you for that. Um, also, question on how long do you hold the Marpe appliance in place after the expansion when you use only four screws for stabilization? Eight or nine months. Uh, in some cases, I can leave it like at, I can remove it at six or seven if we have a soft tissue issue, but only if I am wearing an orthodontic device, but usually around eight to nine months. Okay, thank you for that. Um, a request uh, from a doctor, if you can share with us the protocol of expansion according to the age and when would you stop um, and how long would it take for the crossbite to be corrected? Okay, uh, so the protocol, as I was saying, is not mine. I, I think the the protocol doesn't have um, like a, like the um, paper from which it was taken. Probably it is before the, the paper, but I will place it. But it's like uh, in between uh, less than 30 years, I would say like uh, two activations per day, more than 30 years. Uh, four activations per day. It is a modification of this chart from Dr. Moon. Uh, depends on the size of the screw, but usually in less than a month, you have the space. This is important. Uh, you will, you're going to see in social media, I have them also in my office, cases with like five millimeter uh, diastema on the anterior segment. In these cases, it is because we have used two marpes. With ma one marpe, you will expect, uh, from my clinical experience, around two millimeters. Okay, thank you. Because, um, be sorry, sorry, because the, yeah. the first one opens the suture and it's taking a lot of strength and, and screw bending and everything. And the second one, when, whenever the suture is open, is expanding a lot. Okay, um, there is a question on how much arch length did you gain after expansion with MARPE? Um, we, we lose arch depth. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's uh, arch width is uh, around two millimeters with just the first MARPE from my clinical experience, and I uh, lose arch depth, which is depending on the um, on the crowding we have on the anterior segments. We've reviewed uh, three cases in which there was no crowding, so we lose more anchorage, uh, more arch depth, sorry. If we have uh, crowding, we tend not to lose arch depth. Okay. Um, there is a question on, is it predictable to expand only one side when you have asymmetric uh, crossbite posteriorly? When you have an eight-year-old patient, and it has an asymmetric uh, crossbite, which is, I think it's like 3% uh, of the cases are bilateral and uh, almost nine are uh, unilateral. You do that in a growing patient, asymmetric expansion. It is predictable. Okay. Um, 
So another question is, um, doctors said that they noticed you did not use vertical attachments on canines during extraction cases with AP movement. What is your option on that? Can you repeat, please? Yes, you did not use vertical attachments on canines during extraction cases. Um, so what is your option on that? Um, yes, um, I, I usually, I mean, that's why I was saying I usually use uh, lots of buttons uh, more than more than that. And I don't use vertical ever because I think uh, like a vertical attachment is not going to control the, the tipping. Uh, I prefer an optimized uh, root control uh, attachment or an extrusion attachment, like a horizontal uh, attachment, uh, even to that. But I, I will never use uh, vertical attachments because I don't think it is creating this uh, root movement it is supposed to, to create. But that's a, a point of view. That's why I would go for extrusion, like optimized for extrusion, horizontal, to increase this uh, extrusion, I was saying, especially in class three cases, and uh, especially uh, have optimized uh, root controls, the double attachment with a, with a couple of forces. Perfect. Thank you for the detailed answer on that. Um, so on attachments as well, uh, a doctor is asking when you rescan, do you remove the attachments or leave them on? Um, depends on the case, on the situation, on the time. I mean, it's like uh, sometimes you're in your office and you spend six months doing one thing. And in the six months following, you do a different thing. But on a daily basis, I would say that today I would suggest to remove the attachments and scan. But for instance, uh, today in my office, uh, there is Dr. Sara, my colleague, she's an orthodontist. And because of the coronavirus, they are trying, they are scanning with the attachments and they will remove in a month when we have to bond the new ones. So we reduce the amount of uh, um, water in the air the spray. Okay, thank you. So um, also there's a question of when you decide to use sectional wires uh, and brackets, do you apply them first and then take a new scan for extra um, or additional liners? Um, yes. Okay. Um, okay, so a question is do you up, uh, load the appliance immediately or after a few days? Uh, immediately. Okay. Another question, how do you, I, I assume, do asymmetric expansion? So you have already mentioned in growing patients, so I don't know if this uh, question is around adult patients. Okay, with asymmetric uh, expansion, uh, the, the best thing, I mean, we've seen one of the, of the cases in which we were using one, the second quadrant for anchorage. So if I can leave one quadrant unmovable, I will... Um, use it as, as anchorage, uh, if it's asymmetric, just don't move the, the contralateral uh, quadrant, or we can reinforce it with crisscross elastics. Mm -hmm. And if it's a, a MARPE, it will be the same as with growing patients. It is difficult to, to do it, especially because as far as we know from literature, we should be using four screws, at we, and with four screws, uh, like two of, uh, on every side of the mid palatal suture, it is almost impossible um, from a physics uh, point perspective uh, to difference the, the forces. So it is not an, an ideal uh, movement when it's a, a disjunction. But it's the same with eight year old. Uh, sometimes you you get expansion in the side you, you didn't need it because the crossbite is in the other one. So you have to work more uh, on the second phase of the treatment. Okay, thank you. Another question is, can we use TADS to mesialize molars in order to avoid the bowing effect? Yes, we can. Uh, but um, probably you're going to need um, sectional wires uh, too, or you're going to, know, to use uh, power arms. Uh, I've, see, I've shown it in the, in the pictures, and that's more predictable. But I try to keep it simple. Even with um, with that, we have to plan the the movement, and we have to use power arms. So if I can solve it with a with a power arm, with two power arms, and know that it is much better for for me or for the patient. Okay. 
thank you. Um, so here it's more of um, uh, a uh, question regards to the first case with Marpe. So in the first case, the crossbite was not severe. The doctor is asking, why did you still decide to use Marpe? I agree with you. I was saying at the beginning that probably many of you would say, okay, I can decompensate this with, um, with like a dental alveolar movement, compressing the lower arch and expanding the, the lower arch. But in that case, imagine there is a two millimeter um, uh, movement like transversal movement one millimeter expanding the the upper and one millimeter compressing the lower in that situation the final result would uh, would have been uh, like a, a, a smaller smile at the at the very beginning and finally okay. with this i think i got a, a a better outcome of of expansion i know i can do it also I use CVCT in my office on a daily basis. And I see that many times when we are doing like dental alveolar compensation, we're taking like uh, molars out of the bone, uh, which is creating some problems to the patient. But this, in this patient, it was more an aesthetic uh, purpose to have a, a wider smile at the, at the end of the treatment. Okay, so thank you for um, answering all the questions. Uh, we've um, addressed all of them in the Q&A, and it's also the end of our lecture. So thank you, Dr. Javier, for your detailed presentation and for sharing your knowledge with us. And thank you for all the participants for um, interacting and asking all the questions. Thanks to all of you. Stay home, stay safe. Same. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.